World Tourism Day is celebrated at the instance of the United Nations every September 27th. It was initiated in 1979 to address global challenges outlined in the United Nations Millennium Development Goals and is to highlight the contribution that the tourism sector can make in reaching these goals. Now, for 2016, the theme, Tourism for All, promoting universal accessibility, seems to fit into the plans of the federal government of Nigeria as it seeks ways to drive the economy out of recession. Now, what has Nigeria done with the abundant tourism potential, even as a nation joins others to celebrate another World Tourism Day? Welcome to Big Story. I'm Amy Thompson. Thirty-six states, thirty-six stories, with parts too numerous to overlook. That's the picture of tourism in Nigeria. From the beautiful Bali Hills, covered by clouds in Taraba State, the pile of rocks in Okewo local government area of Kwara State called Imole Boja Rock Shelter, a location that truly serves as a shelter to those who visit it. Climbing to the top requires physical exercise, but the site is worth it. At the top, the surrounding comes to the fore, as well as the rare features of the rock. The local people seeing this natural ceiling here believed that something like this could only have been made by the gods. Imole in Yoruba is the gods. So the gods have made a ceiling here. Imole Boja, the gods have made a ceiling. One of these features of awe is that the big ones rest slightly on the smaller ones with almost nothing to rest on. Being an age-long feature of the community, it had in the past been put to various uses. So in those days, if any maiden should get pregnant in her father's house, such a maiden will be chastised by being banished to this place for a specified number of days. And abusive songs will be sung by her peers within the community. And for those number of days, she'll be here all by her own to act as a deterrent for any maiden might want to do something of such. To put the place to proper use, there's a required line of development, and according to the tourism board, the process has already started with partnership of the villagers. Okay, well, local government area seem truly rich, as it also boasts of Eromola waterfall, which announces its presence even from a distance. and a better view in a close range. The way down is crooked, filled with sharp and slippery stone. This is the price to pay if one intends to enjoy a close contact with a raw Mola waterfall. Always the same impression for all tourists. When we get to the top there and you say, let's get down, they will first of all say, no, it's not me going down there. But coming down is actually fun, as you yourself have seen. Although it's epic, but on getting down here, you will not want to leave. The travel distance explains why the color is muddy, although this does not deter tourists from visiting the site, except when it's dangerous. You can't come down here when, you can, when a raw mola is in full flow. That's around August, September, October, November. It's not possible for anybody to come down to the waterfall because it will be in full flow and it will be so terrific that you can't, it, it's even dangerous to come down. In confirmation of what Mr. Williams says, it's actually nice down here and feels that the experience should not be cut short. In northeast Nigeria, a city of two parts describes Yola, the capital of Adamawa State. The demarcation of Yola City and Jimeta is said to have started when elders of Yola sought to provide residents for visitors, especially foreigners, without distorting the traditional look and features of Yola town. Jimeta and Yola was apart nine miles in those days. 
uh, and you have to literally take nearly a day to walk that distance or to take a cab or a taxi to come. But today is all history. These are only indices of marks. Yola town is the traditional town. Jamaica is the commercial Yola. Put together, we have a state capital that is unique. In between these two, we have a potential to breed what we call as agricultural ecotourism. The valley, the, you know, part of the Benue Valley lies between there. We are even trying very hard not to encourage people to build facilities there so that we can be able to come up with an agricultural enterprise that people can come and see. It's part of our touristic um, uh, strategy. But these two places are now together. Uh, the governor lives in the commercial center of government in Jimeta. The emir, who is the chairman of the traditional council, is, is, is in Yola. And we, we keep it like this because it's good for us. When you come, you go and see the emir as our father, as our elder. And you see Yola, it, in Yola you don't have high-rise buildings. It is kept traditional and, in quote, local. A related natural endowment is in Lagos State, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Lekki Conservation Center, a part of the Nigerian Conservation Foundation, has preserved a haven from the hustle and bustle of the state. The center offers the sight of various animals in their natural display to the pleasure of tourists. For hospitality consultant in Lagos, Trevor Wards, Lagos has even more to offer if tourism is properly managed. Tourism is a, is a very complicated uh, industry and it, uh, it comprises several different uh, components, in, in fact five components. Um, you, you, you talk about uh, attracting them. Uh, what, what attracts people uh, to Lagos State? Well, first and foremost, it's the business activities. So a, a, a business person coming from overseas... Uh, or from Abuja or elsewhere in Nigeria is actually a tourist. And they're coming here uh, because of their, 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 the business that they want to carry out here. So that's the attraction for them, if you like. If you were talking about a leisure tourist uh, coming to, to spend their, their leisure time, their disposable income in Lagos, they may be attracted by the beaches, by the, uh, some of the cultural activities that come on here, the stage plays. Uh, perhaps the museum. So that's what attracts, lures, entices, if you like, a, a leisure tourist. When they're here, also, people need information. As a, as a business visitor, you come here, you, what shall I do? What shall I do with my leisure time? Whether that's in the evening or uh, someone staying over the weekend. And that's where we tend to fall down in terms of information about what people can can, can do as tourists in Lagos. So that's one of the, the gaps, I think, that we have here uh, in, in, in promoting Lagos as a tourism destination, is information about what people can do. All these are apart from the wealth which the Nigerian culture offers. For instance, pottery, which has been in practice for decades. Although it serves as a means of livelihood for some women, in this case, Quara State, the process of producing the pothole's history for a section of Nigerians. However, the question which stares Nigerians in the face is how appreciated or patronized are these rare gifts. The clay, which is their major raw material, comes from the rural parts of the state. Each woman is at her own corner with clay, sand and chemicals to make the pot. It's a slow process and requires one to be meticulous and patient. Everyone begins and ends the process. It begins with mixing of the clay, the molding, smoothing the mixture, and molding again. It's also at this point that the purpose driven pots like a flower pot, and other times the making of a local saving container. <laughs> Thank you. 
Once in three months, the women come together to carry out a central burning at the middle of the compound. After the burning, the coloring and then finishing touches. In all, the process takes about two months since it's totally manual. This may also explain the reason the younger generation cannot be found here except those who have no choice. The women say that all their children have been taught the process but prefer to further their education or get white-collar jobs. To this, they call on the government to help modernize the process as inaction will lead to the extinct of a craft which, if properly managed, can earn the country foreign exchange and mop up unemployment in the state and country as a whole. But this cannot be until Nigerians themselves have come to appreciate and patronize their own. As a way forward, domestic tourism is preached by various government representatives, although they advocate that tourism development be treated at the federal level and not treated as state's projects. If we are able to collaborate at the national level to make sure we take advantage of areas that have comparative tourism advantage as a nation, people will respect us. But even with the development of infrastructure and historical sites in place, the northeastern region of the country has its special needs to work on. We want to work on these psychological issues of fear of the terrorism and insurgency that is happening around us. So we are investing in a lot of media campaign first to change people's uh, um, um, belief about the fact that we are living in a dangerous zone. To, like I always say, maybe Gombe State may be safer than Lagos, may be safer than Abuja, because the number of bombs that are exploded in Abuja may be, number, may be even more than the number of bombs that exploded in Gombe, even during period of insurgency, or Kaduna, or some other places. But for me to psychologically convince people, you have a great role to play. And all these and much more is supposed to be captured in the National Tourism Development Roadmap, which was proposed by the former administration, leaving the Minister of Information and Tourism with the responsibility to capture this administration's plan for developing the sector. For a site to become an attraction and to attract tourists, you need many things. Most importantly, you need infrastructure to even to, able to, be to reach and access those sites. But the tourist, tourism industry is much more complex. And it involves so many other ministries. It starts with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. A tourist wants to come to Nigeria, he needs an entry visa. The way a manner is treated at your embassy in Nigeria will determine whether he wants to come here or not. The fears into Nigeria are uh, unarguably the highest in the world. We also need to talk about that. The tourism industry in Nigeria is still described as full of unexplored potentials, and the man with the responsibility to explore, the Minister of Information and Culture, has a strategy. If you are able to let the local people realize that the huge, the, the, the largest percentage of the benefit is theirs. In terms of creating economy, in, kind of cre in terms of creating jobs for them, they will very gladly cooperate with you. In where tourism has been very developed, they have always carried the local people along with them. So even seminars and, st and stakeholders meeting involving the locals would be the right way to go. Mm -hmm.